Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an app that will generate shorts for your uh, social media. So like think about TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels. It's going to create short form content and we could integrate this with AI or anything, but I'm just going to keep it simple for this video and I'll show you how we can make a simple video generator type of app and I'm going to be using Ruby on Rails. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the console. Now that I'm in the console, I'm going to create a new app by typing the Rails new command and I'm going to put the name of my app. So I'll just call this like short or how about we call it? Shorts creator, and I'm gonna pass in dash D to set PostgreSQL as a database because that's the database that I use mostly. Uh, but you can set that to any database, and I'm also gonna use Tailwind for the CSS framework. So from here, I'm just gonna press enter and it's going to generate the new app for us. All right, now that that's created, you can just CD into our new app. So I called it Shorts Creator. And then we can just start the server with bin slash dev. And then once you start the server, you'll see that uh, it'll be available on, well, localhost port 3000, but it's also, that's just your local IP. I could put localhost port 3000 and then now we see this screen, it's because we need to create the database. So we'll just click this button. And then now that we've done that, uh, we see the Rails logo and it means everything is set up and we're ready to start building this app. So from here, I'm just gonna go back into the console. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add user accounts. So to do that, I'm gonna add the device gem. So I'm gonna say bundle add device. I'm gonna run that. I'm also gonna add my gem, which is tailwind underscore device, which will style the device sign in and sign up pages to be more pretty. So I'm gonna add this gem. All right, now that we have the gems added, I'm going to run Rails G device colon install. This is gonna set up everything for device, but then it'll give us some next steps for like a few things that we need to do, like setting up alerts and setting a root. Uh, so we could do that in a second. Or we could actually do this real quick. Let's just open up the code. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio. Whoops. And I'm going to open up the code. And inside of here, I'm going to actually go into the app folder, the views, and then in the layouts folder, I'm going to create a new file called underscore alerts.html.erb. This is where I'm gonna put the code for the alerts. So I'll just take this code that they have here, which is just some simple Rails code and HTML to display a notice or an alert. And then in the application file in the same layouts folder, I'm gonna go and render our alerts partial. So I'm gonna do that right at the top of the body. I'm gonna render layouts slash alerts. And just like that, we'll have the alerts on our app. <clears throat> so the next thing it says we can do is generate the device views. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use my gem, Rails G Tailwind device, and then colon views. This will generate the views that we need for signing up and, and all of that, and it'll make it pretty. So then the last thing we need to do is create the user model. So we could do Rails G device user. And then just press enter and it'll generate that user model. Now we just need to migrate the database uh, to add the user table. And really that's it. And then if we do bin slash dev, we can go back to the browser. Now we're still on uh, the default rail screen. So we need to set a route so that we can go to like a custom page. So let's start doing that. But first, uh, let's generate a scaffold 
for the model for like a short model. Just do Rusty Scaffold short. And then let's do a short we'll have uh, maybe like a title. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use an image, which would be a type attachment. And then we're also gonna use a sound, or like I guess I'll call it an audio, which would be also type attachment. And then there might be more fields too, but this is just what I'm gonna do for now. So I'm gonna run that. And then I'll migrate to database with Rails DB Migrate. Now, because we're using attachments, we also need to do an installer for active storage. You can just do Rails active storage colon install, and that'll add the migration for active storage. Then we can migrate the database one more time. <laughs> and now finally, we're, we're good to go. We can start the server, although we still need to set the root. So that to do that, we're going to go back into the code. And then let's go over to the config folder and the routes.rb. And then inside of here, we just need to set the root to something. So I'm just going to use the root down here. I'm going to delete the comment. And then I'm going to change this up. So instead of post index, this is we'll go to shorts index. And then after that, when we reload in the browser, you'll see that we are on the shorts page. So then from here, I would create a new short. So what I was thinking is I might do something like, I don't know, like funny video. And then we need an image and an audio. So to get the image, I'm just gonna use Unsplash. And then look, let's look for a funny picture. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it here. And then we're also gonna need like a funny audio, which this might be more tricky. Hmm. We could just put it like a, we honestly could just use a audio though, cause I have tons of music too. But I wanna see if I can find like a funny joke or something. Diamond banana. <laughs> Diamond banana. Okay. I mean, let's take that. That's so random. Wait, how do I download it? Okay. Diamond. Log in to download, really. Uh. All right. I'm just gonna use an audio for my computer. Let's just do like, <laughs> well, I don't even know. I'm gonna have to choose a song or something. We'll create the short. Well, actually right now, this hasn't created the short. So to do that, we're gonna need to add some code for this. So let's open up uh, the Visual Studio code editor again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new Ruby class that we're going to use to put all store all, all of our code to create the short. <clears throat> well, we could put it in the short model, but I feel like it'll get confusing. So we could either store this in the models folder or we could create a new folder called services and store it there. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do, how you want to organize it. So hmm, <laughs> let's just do it in the models folder for now. I'll make a model called short creator to RB. This is just going to be a Ruby class, so it's not going to inherit from anything. What we're going to do is, I think I'll initialize it with a short. And we'll set short. So we'll set the instance variable to short, and then I'll also do an adder reader. Which what this does is it allows us to use uh, short all over in the other places. So then after we're going to have another method, which will just say like, create short and inside of here we'll have the code to create the short so what I'm gonna be using to do this is I'm gonna use FFM peg <coughs> and basically we're gonna take I'm gonna use it to take um, an audio and an image and then loop it together all right so I just got this from ChatGPT, but it should work for what we need so then inside of the create short method we're gonna execute this code, which actually we're gonna need to put it in uh, backticks, which 
go make this execute. In Ruby, that's what backticks do. So if you're ever, <laughs> yeah, it is kind of confusing, but if you put anything in backticks, it'll execute as command line code. And then we're actually gonna need to interpolate these two things. So instead of these files, we're gonna need to add our actual short file. So first of all, let's say, let's first return if short.image.attached. So if it's not attached, if not short image attached or not short.audio attached. Just because we want to make sure that it's always there. Although we could probably we should also add validations though. So let's quickly add a validation in the short model. Uh, validates presence of and we can just put image and audio. So we're always gonna validate that on the form. And then we shouldn't even need this code, but still I'm gonna leave it just to be safe. And then this, now what we're gonna do is we're going to open the images locally. So, so if you do dot open, it's gonna download the image and then we can pass in uh, the path to it right here. So we can just interpolate in here. So instead of a video, it's gonna be our local image and <laughs> pretty sure it's just like path. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the audio, but we're also gonna have to open that. So we can just do that in another loop. Let's say short dot audio dot open. Go audio. Oh, and I forgot to do, <laughs> you need to ha add a do to make this block work. Okay, so now we're opening the image and the audio. And we're also gonna need to pass in the audio path. And then right here would be the output. So for our output, I'm just going to make another variable called output file path. And we're gonna just set this up here. So this is gonna equal to temp slash. So we're gonna store it in the temp folder. And then I wanna really create a new folder in here. Here's what I was looking for, Fire, file utils. So I'm going to go and require this at the top. And then we're gonna make dir. So we'll do this right in here. Let's do this temp slash videos. And the output path is going to be temp slash video slash video underscore short ID. And we're going to interpolate this so that it makes a unique short name. But we're going to delete this after we're done saving it. Uh, so after this, we should have this file here. But let's just try to test this out to see if this even works All right at this point. So first of all, uh, to do FFmpeg, you need to have this installed. And by default, you don't have this installed. So you have to install, look up how to install FFmpeg, and then you're gonna have to install it for your different platform. So like on Mac, Windows, or Ubuntu. You have to figure out how to download it. And then also when you're deploying this to production, you need to also install FFmpeg wherever in your production environment to make this work. So that's something that you should note. All right, so let's see if this works. So to test this out, I'm gonna go in the console, do rail C, and then I'm just going to, so I'm gonna do the short creator dot new, and I'll just pass in the latest short. So I'll say short dot last, and then <laughs> I'll just say create short. Let's see what happens. It looks like unable to find a suitable output format for this hmm ah, I see so I think the f 
the file name has to have a file extension. So because oh, up here in the file path, I just had like temp this. I think I need to actually have MP4. All right, so let's go back to the console and I'll try that again. So in the console, you can just press the up arrow and you'll go back to your last command. So I'm gonna do that. All right, and it looks like it kind of worked. I don't know, it kind of like, it, it ran for a second, but then it stopped. Hmm. So let's open up the temp folder, <laughs> the videos. Oh look, we have our first video. Hmm. The question is, did it, did it do what we wanted? It's not really a, no, it's not really a video. So it only has the audio. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let me actually, let me open up. So I got that command from ChatGPT. <laughs> let me open up my real app and go to where we actually have this code. All right, so I got some updated options from my personal app. I can see if this helps. Probably still gonna need to update it. So one thing right here I noticed is the VF scale. So I'm changing this, but for a short, I actually want this to be opposite. So 1920 by 1080 is gonna be the regular YouTube kind of size landscape. But for shorts, we want to switch. The, we want to switch this around. So it's 1080 by 1920. That's how we're gonna to want to export these. Everything else should be fine except for the shortest option. I think that just means like whichever. Actually, I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Let's go in the console and let's run this again. Let's see if this works better. Oh yeah, we do want to override it. Hmm. I don't really know if it worked better. Oh, wait, it did, it did, it did. We got it, okay, but the, the thing is now, the dash shortest option, I see, so that's, that means it picks the, whichever is shortest. So I think it just uses like the image and it maybe doesn't do the whole audio, I'm wondering. Let's try this again. So yes, I wanna override it. Hmm. What happened now? Oh, okay, I actually did the whole video. Wow. I see it has, so this kind of, this is already basically the short. The only thing now is, so basically I want to figure out how I can add a duration. All right, it looks like that was pretty simple. It's just dash T. So I can probably choose anywhere in here. Dash T, and let's just say 30 seconds. Oh, the only thing is, what if the audio is shorter? Mm, then it's kind of tricky. So I wonder if I should still do the dash shortest. But now it doesn't really make sense. So that is questionable. We might have to do some logic in here. Some more logic. But let's just do it. Let's just try this again. And yeah, let's just, I guess we can do it from the console. Short. Uh, let's see, did it do a 30 second short? Oh yeah, it did. So everything's working as we expected, but now I just want to hook this in with the form and like the flow of the page. Because right now, uh, it's it's not even happening automatically. We have to do it from the console. So I want to set this up in our app better. So what I want to be able to do really is first, I guess let's just destroy that short. And then what I want to do is after, when we create a new short, I want it to automatically start creating the video. And then I want to store it on the short model. So first let's go to the short model and let's add a new attachment. So we'll say has one attached short so it's a short dot short or maybe we can just say has one attached video and this is what we're gonna we're gonna save to here after we've generated the video so at the end of these two loops 
let's create a new line and then let's say file.open the output file path so this variable and then we're going to do a loop say local uh, I guess video and then inside of here we're going to attach it so we're going to say short.video.attach io is what we're going to set to local video so this is like the file data and then we also need to set a file name so for this <coughs> uh, we can just say like video I don't know just like short video or we could even take the title you know there's a title but then we have to turn it into like a safe for a file name so that's kind of tricky say short.title let's interpolate this I think we can say like underscore <laughs> or maybe we should do dot parameterize if I can spell that if I can spell that right let's let's go in the console let's, let's try real quick so let's do rail C set short to short dot last short dot title Oh, does short not have a title? Oh, short is nil? Hmm. All right, let's <laughs> Dang, now it's tricky. Okay, let's just say short title equals. Yeah. Love YouTube. What happens if we say dot parameterize? Okay, that perfect. That turns into something that we could use as a file name. So why don't we just use the name of their short? Param Parameterize. That's really hard to spell. So yeah, parameterize. And then outside of the interpolation, I'm gonna add the file extension. And then this should do. And also at the end of this, we can also file delete the output file path just to delete. The, so we don't like bloat up our system when we're creating these shorts. All right, and this should be good. And then on the view on the shorts show page, what we can do is I guess when we're rendering short inside of here, we can also render the video. So let's just do that right under here. Let's first, let's just do video tag short.video, but then we'll say if short.video attached. Refresh, oh, we have to restart the server. All right, now we can go back Let's go and create a new short. Let's get a nice song or something. Could be any audio. So see, it should be creating it. Oh no, I actually I forgot to, I forgot to make it create the short. So actually in the controller, we have to go to the shorts controller and then on the create, so see after short.save, we have to run that short creator. But actually I don't wanna I don't wanna stall up the the process. Although let's just do that for right now. So we could do this just from here. We could pass in short, create short, but you're gonna see that there are some drawbacks because when you do a when you're running this code it's actually gonna stall up this whole request before you get redirected. So before you see this page, it'll have to create the short. So let's go and create that short one more time. So you can see. We're gonna create short. And then see there was kind of a lag. Well, it's not that noticeable in development, but in production, it might've been more uh, noticeable. But then you see it down here. This is the short. Oh, I forgot to. Wait, why is why can't we view it? I think you need to add controls. True. All right, now we can actually play the short. 
Let's try to resize this though, that's way too big. Oh, you'll see it is in the right aspect ratio. So from here, uh, you could just download this and then go and post it on your YouTube or your Instagram reels. But I think a good next step would be to integrate with the APIs. So like all of the, like the TikTok, I know they have a TikTok API. So see, we could integrate with this and then just post the short right from your app. And there's so much more. We could talk to AI. We could have AI create pictures. We could do slideshows too. So I just wanted to show how cool this is and how you can use FFmpeg inside of your Ruby on Rails app. And you can create videos like this that you could then post to all your platforms. And there's so many options that you can do. Like there's so many things that you can do from here with this app. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll be making a lot more content coming.